to bless your holy name for this wonderful miracle you have performed here this morning. Thank you for Brother David and Sister Honorio there. By this time yesterday, by this time about an hour ago, they were standing separately. But just a few minutes ago, you performed a wonderful miracle in their lives that will become a testimony forever. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. As we hear your word briefly, I pray that your children will pay special attention to these words. It will lead them in their journey that is ahead. And for every family here whose marriage or whose marriages are challenged, Lord, I pray that fresh oil and fresh breath will come upon such home after now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this meeting and take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Please recover your seats. I want to just read a couple of verses from the scripture we have read this morning. And then I'll just share a few things. And that will be it. Choristers, God bless you. You can have your seat. Ephesians chapter 5. I'll read 22, I'll read 23, I'll read 24, 25, and 26, and maybe 27. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, and that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Praise the name of the Lord. My brother and my sister, brother David, sister Honorio there, I want to start by saying congratulations to you. A day like this is such a unique moment, a unique encounter you can never forget for the rest of your life. You can't forget it. And that it's happening in the last month of this year, you know, is something that is so memorable. And I pray that both of you will finish strong and finish well. In the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate everyone that made it uh, to this occasion. It's always nice, always wonderful when on your day of joy, you look around and you find people celebrating with you. My prayer for everyone that came here is that things of celebrations will never cease from your homes. Oh, I thought you will receive that prayer. Yeah. And when is your time to celebrate? You will not lack men and women that will gather around you to celebrate with you. And for the families of brother and sister David Mukoro, I want to say congratulations. Uh -huh. What God has settled today, I can tell you, will cause the joy of both families to overflow in the name of Jesus. 
on a day like this, we don't preach long sermons. Because the couple, they are in a hurry to go and start the journey. So you don't, you don't keep them here for too long. Secondly, they have gone through a very rigorous counseling class, counseling, counseling session that lasted for months. And they would have told them so many things about this journey. So what we try to do here is to highlight a few things from experience. It's better, <laughs> it's better said from experience than to just say it because you want to say something. And I pray that as we share some of the experiences we have, it will be valuable to this couple and the Lord will help them in the name of Jesus. The topic is very straightforward. And it says, your marriage will end well. Very prophetic. So, you will enjoy a very successful marriage. And the Lord will back you up in the name of Jesus. But there are a few things I said I would just share with you. And I'm going to be talking from 22 years experience. It's not much. I know some people are here who have been in this thing for far more than that. But 22 years is still not, um, it's still reasonable enough <laughs> for me to, to, to say one or two things. Amen. Amen. Now, Brother David. You heard me read from Ephesians chapter 5. And one of the things I mentioned there is that husbands love your wives. I also said there, husband is the head of the wife. It's in scriptures. I'm not saying from my head. And so, you should love the wife as he loves himself. Sister Honorode, I mentioned here, the first thing I read, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, the first thing I want to drop with you people this morning is that as you embark on this journey, Brother David, your mind is somewhere. Forget everything, all will be well. Everything is fine. The reception will go well. Eh? No, 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 nothing to worry about. God has taken over. You are going into this journey. Eh? Enter into it with a heart of gratitude. Both of you. Be grateful to God that at last He has given you your spouse. So, just go in with that understanding. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 22, Proverbs 18, verse 22, it says, He that findeth a wife, findeth what? A good thing, not a bad thing. So, Brother David, you have something very good and precious in your hands. The scripture did not stop there. He says, and obtained favor of the Lord. What that means is, things may have been unfavorable. But because God has helped you to find a good thing, he says, favor will follow. So, enter into this marriage with a heart of gratitude. Father, I thank you that at last I have found my spouse, I have found a good thing, and favor is my portion. Very important. And I said I'm going to be talking from experience. Till tomorrow, I am still grateful to God for giving me my wife. So anytime I pray, Father, I thank you for the gift of this woman. So I like you to have that attitude of gratitude. Because what 
you don't appreciate. What you appreciate is what you cherish. And what you cherish will never depreciate in your hands. For as long as you keep appreciating God for this gift, it will only keep getting better. The same applies to Sister Onos. Don't wake up one day and begin to compare your husband with other men. Because those men, you saw them before you prayerfully or you were led by God to Brother David. Same with Brother David. So many women in the shafts, some of them tall, fat, huge. But in the midst of all of them, you found Sister Onos. Be grateful to God for that gift. And it will continue to appreciate in your hands in the name of Jesus. And when I talk about gratitude, it should be all encompassing. When your wife serves you food, learn to say thank you. When she does anything for you, never say it's your right. Even if scripture says, wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord, even in the midst of the submission, learn to say thank you. Whatever she offers, appreciate. And can I humble you? Sister Onoroda, be grateful also. Be very grateful for everything. Anything your husband does for you, no matter how small, appreciate it. Praise the name of the Lord. This is not a marriage class. I would have told you something more than this. But learn to appreciate one another. Number two. In this journey, put your trust in God completely. You are just starting. You don't know how it will end. But we have prophesied that it will surely end well. Amen. But the one who knows the end from the beginning is the one that is leading you. So you must trust him completely. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Put your trust in him. Trust him for divine provision. Trust him for divine direction. Trust the Lord for protection. Trust him for fruitfulness. Because he's the one that says, there shall be no burden in the land. And he's the one who said in Genesis 1.28, after blessing man, he says, be fruitful. Multiply, replenish the earth. So put all your trust in him. As you embark on this journey. Praise the name of the Lord. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, and this is very important. Deliberately set out to make your marriage work. Tell yourselves that you know what? Whether the devil likes it or not, God has brought us together. We will do everything under God to make our marriage heaven on earth. The Englishman says, as you make your bed, so you lie on it. Money is not what gives joy in marriage. 
But I know money will come. If it has not come, it will surely come. But once the couple understand themselves and they take a position that they will make their marriage work, it doesn't matter what outsiders want to do or you know, want to believe, you will be successful. I remember before I eventually married, you know, when we were going through courtship, I called my wife one day. Then not my, she wasn't my wife yet. And I asked her a very simple question. I said, what is your take on this uh, relationship? What are you expected in marriage? She didn't quite understand the question. And I said to her, I said, I don't know about you. I've made up my mind that my home will be heaven on earth. And that my marriage will be one of the best in the whole world. I don't know about you. If that is not your desire, then we should end the courtship now. The Bible says, can two work together? Except they be agreed. So if the husband is saying, I want to make it work, and the wife cares less, there's a challenge. So I'm dropping this with you today. Make up your mind. Decide on your own that you'll make your marriage work. Make it a memorable experience from the very first day. When I got married, the first place I lived was somewhere around the Borikoko here. There's a street they call Otoro Street. That's why I love Borikoko people very well. <laughs> Because this was where I started. I got that house as a bachelor. It was during dry season. I didn't know it was waterlogged area. But we got in there. When the rains came, you know, you discovered that you can't even drive in. But I love that place. The few number of years I stayed there, uh, wonderful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when we started, thank God she's here. You can ask her. Or she just came in. We can decide on an evening like this, we want to go and eat out. I had one car that was bad. So we just we'll leave the car and we'll take the bike. I will enter one, she will enter another one. As the head of the home, I will ask the back carrying her to be in front. <laughs> and then we'll just go to somewhere, sit down there. Maybe just take pepper soup. He said, Oh. <laughs> oh, go and take his here because then I used to enjoy it. Spend some time. And we go back home so happy, so excited. Our evening well taken care of. Everybody's happy. That was how we started. So you see me today, don't think uh, I don't have my past. I, do, I have my past. So make up your mind that your marriage will be sweet. Irrespective of all the... Will there be challenges? Yes, there will be challenges. Let nobody fool you. Challenges will come. But that's why I said, put your trust in God. As long as he's there, leading you on this journey, he will carry you through every of such challenge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Two more things I will share. My brother, as the head of the home, you must be ready to stand in the gap. I tell young men who go into marriage, laziness is unacceptable. It also speaks to the husband and the wife. But more importantly to the husband, be, very, be a responsible man. A very responsible man. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 says, 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8, If any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith, is worse than an infidel. You know, when Paul was addressing Timothy, he was trying to emphasize the importance of people working to provide for themselves and their families. So, I know God will empower you and strengthen your hands. And whatever you are doing now, the Lord will breathe upon it and give you the grace to do more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, and my sister, you have heard about the virtuous woman. The times we are now are not times where a woman sits back and expects the man to do everything. No, not, not at all. Even when the man appears to be progressive, the woman must also be doing something to support I know you as an industrious person. So I expect that the Lord also will help you and help the two of you in the name of Jesus. One thing I would, before I round up, no matter the challenge, don't do anything nasty to yourselves. Brother David, even when you are angry, manage your anger. Don't get to the point where you have to take very rash decisions that could affect your relationship with your wife. And let me put it straight to you. Never you one day raise up your hand to say you are beating your wife. Did you hear me? Aha. Uh -huh. And I hope, I'm saying this from the altar, and I hope you will take this home and the Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. A man of God was preaching on the man who beats the wife. And he says, that man is nothing but a fool. Why did he say so? He said, God has brought two of you together. Husband and wife, you have become one. So, can you, a man, now raise up your hand and be slapping yourself? That's why he said, the man who is doing that lacks understanding. And that's exactly but it is when you hear people beating their wives. And now these days you see wives beating their husbands. I am serious. It didn't start today. When I was a child, I've said it here from this altar. A couple, they will come to the house to meet my parents uh, to settle their quarrel. And you hear the man, my dad will send us somewhere so we won't hear what they are saying. But we'll be peeping through the door. Through the, and the man will be saying, can you imagine? She raised her hand. She slapped me. And the woman will say, but I told you sorry. After slapping the man, you told him sorry. So women beat their wives, beat their husbands. But I pray that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Sister who knows, mind the company you keep. Mind the people you hang around with. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 11. Says, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all. But what are they? Busy bodies. And First Timothy 5 verse 13. 5 1 Timothy 5 verse 13 says, 
And without, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. May the Lord empower you to be productive. Empower both of you to be productive. And help you through this journey. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that your marriage will work. It will not end in divorce. It will end gloriously. Bow down your heads, everyone. Let's appreciate God for this couple. And let's pray for them that God himself that has brought this mystery to pass will keep them together in love, in unity will sustain them in this journey that they will love themselves more than ever before no hindrance, no obstacle on their way will stop them from getting to their destination and from finishing well. But is there anyone in the house this morning that as the word was coming it just dawned on you that there are things about your life you need to repent from. And you are saying, oh God, how I wish I heard these words earlier. I probably wouldn't have been in this mess that I've found myself. If you are such a person, just wave your hands to God. I want to pray with you wherever you are in this congregation. I just want to pray with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everyone rise on your feet. And please stretch forth your hands to the couple and pray for them. And God will help them in this journey. Help them to finish strong. Help them to finish well. And cause his grace to be multiplied upon their union. Thank you everlasting Father. In Jesus name we have prayed. Father will bless your holy name for brother David and sister Norio there that you have brought together today in holy matrimony. We thank you for your word that has come forth. And Lord, we ask that these words will resonate in their hearts. And Lord, as they live with it and by it, you will help them to succeed in every area of their marriage. And I pray also for everyone here whose home is troubled. Father, you are the one that sees all and knows all. I pray that you go into those families and address all the challenges cause their homes and marriages to be restored again and let the joy in you that they have lost be rekindled again in their lives thank you everlasting father as we continue in this program continue with us and let your name be glorified in jesus name we have prayed amen, amen.